and on behalf of Dawngere University, I heartily welcome you, sir. I'm happy to welcome Dr. K. B. Rangappa, sir, Chairman and Dean, Faculty of Arts, Department of Studies in Economics, Dawngere University, Dawngere. Welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Now I request welcome the coordinator for this workshop, Dr. Huchi Gowda, Associate Professor, Department of Studies in Economics, Downgare University, Downgare. Welcome you, sir. Thank you. I take privilege to welcome Dr. S. Suchitra and Dr. R. Selby, Associate Professors, Department of Studies in Economics, Downgare University, Downgare. I heartily welcome you both of this workshop, madams. Mm -hmm. I also extend warm welcome research scholars and all participants from various places who are being a part of this workshop. I welcome you all. Now I take this opportunity to give a very brief introduction about today special resource person, Dr. Prem Kumar Jiyas, Associate Professor of Economics, Department of Economics, SRMV PG Center, University of Mysore, Mandya. He has successfully guided 10 scholars for their PhD degree and 18 MPhil scholars. He has published several research articles, 48 journals, 15 edited books, and has attended 36 international conference, 56 national seminars. The resource person is expert in the field of data analysis, SPSS, e-views, Gretel, and so on. Now, sir is going to deliver a lecture. Once again, I heartily welcome you, sir, in this session. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Dada, can you unmute the other mobile one? Yeah. Okay. Chetan, unmute all and uh, accept Prem Kumar sir's number. Do sir, I think you can start, sir. Uh, Prem Kumar, sir, please unmute yourself, sir. Prem Kumar, sir, please unmute yourself, yes. sir. Yes, sir. So one Aye. more is there. One more is there, sir. connected with two devices. Yeah, fine, sir. Even in the second device, you can unmute, yeah. sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. First one, I will... Uh... I use only for the slide share. Yeah, fine, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. Sir, shall I start? Yeah, you can start, sir. You can start, sir. Yes. <clears throat> uh, friends, uh, thank you for the nice introduction of me. Uh, and I also thank Rangappa sir, Uchegavada sir, uh, Madam Suchitra and Selvi madam uh, for giving this opportunity to part of this workshop. Uh, today, uh, I am going to talk about the one of the problem in estimations of uh, multiple regression analysis, namely multicollinearity. Uh, friends, uh, let me recap. Uh, the first three days, uh, the topics which are covered. What's up under this? Ok, 
Sir, we are not able to see. Not able to see. It's two zones. Hey, what happened to this? Sir, now we are able to see our desktop, sir. Ha ha ha. So, can you see now? Your screen we are not able to see now, sir. I think now you can see. Ah yes, sir. Now we can see, sir. yeah so just let me uh, uh, recap uh, the first three days we have introduced uh, the frequency distributions we have madam also talked about uh, the different uh, uh, probability distributions theoretical distribution and also uh, sir has covered the many concepts of uh, regression multiple regression discussed about the some of the assumptions uh, we made uh, we made while estimating the uh, regression coefficients namely beta 1 beta 2 uh, like that and uh, sir also mentioned about we use wireless method to estimate the regression coefficients <clears throat> right so the for the use of wireless uh, estimations we make many assumptions so there are 11 assumptions we make for use of ordinary least square method so one of the assumption is that there is huge problem so one of the important uh, uh, we have seen is the multi collinearity prem sir sir there is problem in uh, screen sharing now i think once again share your screen is it okay sir yeah now its process is going on yeah now it's okay yeah, yeah now ah. so uh, the eighth problem in the gujarati book you can see that uh, the eighth problem is the multi collinearity so in this one one and a half hour i am going to cover these things so what, what is the nature of and types of multi collinearity and what are the major causes of causes for this multi collinearity and uh, if multi collinearity exists what are the consequences how to detect this multi collinearity and what are the correction methods so these five important topics i am going to cover as i have understood from the organizers so we have one hour to uh, 75 minutes and uh, the theoretical part is so vast so that uh, i briefly uh, introduce these concepts and while estimating the problem of multi collinearity i talk about i discuss about the problem nature and many other things <clears throat> so what is the eighth assumption explained the eighth assumption uh, says there is no correlation 
uh, are the covariance between the independent variables meaning independent variables are not having any relationship but as we all know in economics most of the economic variables one or the other way are having the relationship you take any two any two variables you talk about the income and wealth so there will be some amount of relationship you talk about export and import there will be some certain amount of relationship you talk about consumption and uh, uh, auxiliary consumption or the other expenditure there will be some certain amount of uh, relationship so therefore uh, the relationship among the economic variables is a common feature and if that relationship exists definitely there will be a problem of multicollinearity so therefore the multicollinearity is a common problem in estimation of multiple regression equation <clears throat> so what we expect according to our eighth assumption that is the no uh, multicollinearity uh, no multicollinearity means the covariance uh, between x1 x2 x3 should be equal to zero so when it is exactly equal to zero then there is no problem of multicollinearity but however as we have understood from the economic situations there will be some amount of a relationship among the independent variables so then what we have to do so in the nature of uh, multicollinearity we discuss about the relationship between the independent variables so it is we are not going to consider about the dependent variable when we are talking about purely about the independent variables the existence of relationship among the independent variables okay if there is any amount of any kind of any degree of relationship among the independent variables meaning the regressors then there is a problem of multi coin so there are two types of multicollinearities uh, the one is the perfect multicollinearity and another one is the imperfect uh, multicollinearity uh, however so in this uh, class i am going to talk about uh, the imperfect multicollinearity so because the perfect multicollinearity when the perfect multicollinearity exists among the independent variables so the multiple regression model cannot be estimated so therefore so perfect multicollinearity is a rare phenomena and uh, if that exists it is impossible to estimate the model so therefore we left with only imperfect multicollinearity so what is the nature of this multicollinearity so multicollinearity as we have understood it is not the problem of the population in the population we are not having this kind of the multicollinearity problem when we take the samples this problem will be occurred the multicollinearity problem will be occurred internet tumba problem martha ide so so the problem of multicollinearity will be occurred only in the case of sample samples so therefore multicollinearity is the problem of samples and not the problem of and not the problem of population so this is because uh, the multicollinearity is a sample problem and then uh, this multicollinearity is because independent variables in a regression equation are assumed to be non stochastic so that population covariance between them is zero by definition but in a sample of a given population the independent variables may be correlated so this is how the problem of multicollinearity exist in sample not exist in the population so we have to be very clear 
so that the multicollinearity is the problem of sample not the problem of populations so there are two types already have mentioned perfect multicollinearity and uh, imperfect multicollinearity a perfect multicollinearity means existence of an exact linear relationship between uh, two or more independent variables as i have already mentioned so uh, for example uh, you can see here uh, look at here the beta 3 x3 uh, the x3 in this case is exactly equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 x2 so that is some total of a uh, beta 2 x2 plus alpha is exactly equal to x3 so if this is the case then definitely that the the problem the model has the multicollinearity problem and that is a perfect multicollinearity problem so because if you compute the correlation between x2 and x3 and that correlation will be equal to 1 so this is called perfect multicollinearity so in the case of imperfect multicollinearity uh, the r23 that is if you compute the correlation coefficient between uh, the variable 2 and the 3 it is large the correlation coefficient value it is always lies between the minus 1 and plus 1 and uh, it will be large but not equal to 1 so in absolute value okay in absolute don't uh, consider this uh, sign of the coefficients just to consider only the a uh, value so the values almost equal to 1 but not equal to 1 so if that is the case we call it as imperfect multi collinearity okay so this would be so take this example again the x3 is equal to this first part that is this is this part and it's also into a certain amount of error term so certain amount of the random effect uh, which will make the x3 is equal so therefore x3 is not exactly equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 x2 it is also including some error terms so this explains the imperfect multicollinearity so there are two types of multicollinearity one is perfect multicollinearity and the second one is imperfect multicollinearity right so so if if there is a perfect multicollinearity uh, there is no solution for, for that the model cannot be estimated when we have uh, the problem of multicollinearity which is imperfect so then we can by using some uh, correction methods we can oh, sorry prem kumar sir sorry and prem we prem can sir. identify the prem kumar sir ಸರ್ ಸರ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀರಾ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀರಾ ಸರ್ ಸರ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನೆಟ್ ಮೈಸೂರು ತುಂಬಾ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಸರ್ ರಾತ್ರಿ ಎಲ್ಲ ಮಳೆ ಆಗಿದೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ತುಂಬಾ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀರಾ ಸರ್ ಮಾಡಿದೆ ಬರ ಮಾಡಿದೀನಿ ಸರ್ ಬಂದಿದೆ ಓಕೆ ಸರ್ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಸರ್ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಸೊ ದರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಇಫ್ ದರ್ ಈಸ್ perfect multicollinearity we cannot estimate if there is the imperfect multicollinearity uh, we can estimate the model and we can also solve the problem of multicollinearity so therefore we are concerning with imperfect multicollinearity not with the perfect multicollinearity okay so what are the causes uh, for this kind of the Uh, perfect multicollinearity i am not going to talk about all these things because we are not interested when you, if you if are using a you use uh, for the estimation of the models the you use will not allow you to estimate the model itself it will say uh, the synthetic error okay uh, right so syntax error will come right ah uh, so
So in the case of imperfect but high multicollinearity, these are some of the reasons. That is, the poor data is the reason, and the manipulated data is the reason for the multicollinearity. Maybe in some cases, some a small sample size it's also or uh, sometimes it is uh, uh, reasons for the imperfect multicollinearity. And time series data, especially macro data. You know, you take any macro data which are available on time like GDP, uh, saving, consumption, export, import. One or the other way, they are all having the increasing trend. So you take an example GDP over the period of time, it tends to increase. You take the example of uh, consumption or saving, investment, export, import, production. So you take any example, all these variables, macro variables are having the tendency of increasing. They tend to increase over the period of time. So when all these variables are increased over the period of time, certainly there exists some amount of relationship among, the, among these uh, variables. So therefore, uh, when we use macroeconomic data, uh, the time series macroeconomic data, so there is a chances of having the problem of uh, the imperfect multicollinearity. So these are some of the reasons, uh, right? <laughs> so when we have perfect multicollinearity, as I told already, it cannot be estimated. Okay, uh, we cannot estimate the equation. So already have mentioned so because uh, uh, there is uh, the relationship is always equal to one and we cannot estimate uh, it is syntax uh, error will come in the EOUs. Hello, sir. Sir, just a minute, sir. I go internet hold hold sir. Do you help do? I think you were then. Sir, just sir. Network problem with answer the. Do barta ga mat. Yeah. Cannot move this. Sir, if the PPD is frozen, you can uh, do control alt delete, then task manager and uh, shut down the program and again restart it, sir. Okay, okay, I'm trying. Yeah, fine, sir. Uh, it's connecting now. Just a minute, just a minute.
ಸಮಟೈಮ್ ಅದು ನೆಟ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ಲ್ಯಾಪ್ಟಾಪ್ ಎರಡು ಮೊಬೈಲ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ಲ್ಯಾಪ್ಟಾಪ್ ಎರಡಕ್ಕೂ ಒಂದೇ ನೆಟ್ವರ್ಕ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋದು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಕಷ್ಟ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿಲ್ ಕಮ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ when we have the perfect multicollinearity we cannot estimate the uh, model so when we have the imperfect but high multicollinearity uh, what we can do so seldom if ever would we have zero multicollinearity in a regression model that is not possible uh, that is we never have a regression equation in which all regressors are orthogonal that is also not there. Uh, thus the issue is not of detection but one of degree of intercorrelation what i mean to say here so here here our task is not to identify whether the multicollinearity exist or not our purpose is to what is the degree of this multicollinearity not simply whether the multicollinearity exist or not so more or because multicollinearity is a sample problem rather than a population problem there is no formal test for its presence so okay the multicollinearity whether it presents or not so we are not having any test so only thing what we can do either the multicollinearity is the, uh, that will there will be multicollinearity but our intention is our uh, focus is to understand what is the degree of we have is some general guidelines we have some general guidelines um, based on those general guidelines we try to uh, identify the nature of and the degree of multicollinearity exist among the independent uh, variables so some of the guidelines i am mentioning here uh, you can uh, uh, go through these uh, slides i will share with uh, the organizers we can go through with uh, this how to identify on uh, this so some of the and the most uh, practically these are some of the guidelines i am just showing because due to shortage of time just i am showing uh, vi factor uh, and uh, so there, there are six different ways to identify the multicollinearity but the best way and the practically uh, the practical one is uh, computing the correlations among the independent variables so this is the most pro- most practiced a uh, method for identifying the uh, correlations among the independent variables if the correlation coefficient is high among the independent variables then we treat it as there is a problem of multicollinearity <coughs> okay so then let me make it brief so our Kumar, our focus is sorry, sorry, not about sir. the perfect multicollinearity sir uh, sir uh, if there sir, is ppt sharing uh, can you sir? share your ppt uh, can you mail your ppt to chetan so that uh, you will manage the ppt sir sir now continue martha you sir idu ppt actually kanta illa sir iga no no ppt kanta illa sir kanta illa no no ppt has not shared now Yeah. there is an uh, it is another another alternative if you share your ppt to this mail id 
हां बट देन इट टेक्स टाइम वाला सर या या जस्ट इट इज अनदर शेयर आ गया सर नो नो नॉट इट ओए आगे सर आगते प्रॉब्लम हेलो सर हेलो सर शेयरिंग तो सर या बट इट्स नॉट म्यूचुअल इयर Sir, could you make this? Actually, I have sent SMS or email ID. Hmm? So, so that. Yes, sir. 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 So then, man, will marry by car. Cost is that all. Ah, sir, here uh, one more thing. I mean, one more thing, sir. Uh, yeah. You just close ah. the other windows, sir. Other application yes, windows. If you have opened more that. than one, if you have opened yeah. more than one application windows, uh, close everything and just uh, this must. Uh, I mean, let this be there, sir. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, probably. Sign out and so calculation part is difficult but otherwise ppt can be share, can be sent through email sir so sir ee bar madi sir iga yeah try madi sir let us try but time is going out yeah sir nodi sir bantu anta iga no
yeah without sharing i think i know software management and software calculation is difficult hmm? i think since there is problem at least uh, we can have that ppt ah, sir yeah just a second sir once again i will log in once again just logging out ah sir log out log out and log in once again sir fine fine okay sir ah. And
ಸರ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಸರ್ ಇದು ಸರ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಮೇಲ್ ಮಾಡಿಬಿಡಿ ಸರ್ ಅಕಡೆ ಇವರಿಗೆ ಚೇತನ್ಗೆ ಹಾ ಚೇತನ್ ಮೇಲ್ ಮಾಡಿಬಿಡಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಚೇತನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಪ್ಲೇ ಮಾಡ್ತಾನೆ ನೀವು ಅಕಡೆ ಇದು ಲಿಫ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಿಬಿಡಿ ಅಕಡೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಗಡಾ ಇದು ಲ್ಯಾಪ್‌ಟಾಪ್ ಏನೇ ಸರಿಯಾಗಿ ಇದಾಗ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಇದು ಹೌದು ಹೇಗಿದ್ರೂ ಈಗ ನಿಮ್ಮದು ಫೋಟೋ ವಿಸಿಬಲ್ ಆಗ್ತಿದೆ ನಿಮ್ಮ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಬಾ ಈಗ ನೀವು ಒಂದು ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡಿ ಗಡಾ ಈಗ ಹೇಗಿದ್ರು 12 ವರೆ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಬಂತಲ್ಲ ಅದೆ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಿಸ್ಬಿಡ್ತಾರೆ ನೋಡು ಹಾ ಮಲ್ಟಿಕೋಲ್ಟಿಸಿಟಿ ನಿರಂಜನ್ If he is ready, we shall start it. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Hello. Sir, do you want to start the start? 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 ಹಾಂ ಅದೇ 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 ಸರ್ ಹಾಂ ಹೌದು ಹೌದು ಸರ್ ಓಕೆ ಓಕೆ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಸರ್ ಓಕೆ ಹಾಂ ಸರ್ 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 ಈ ವಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟೂ ಮಿನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಸರ್ ಸೊ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಈ ಈ ವಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟೂ ಮಿನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಸರ್ ಯು ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಜಾಯ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ರೈಟ್ 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 ಲೆಟ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಜಾಯ್ನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ದಟ್ ಟ್ರಾಸ್ ಕೆಡಾಸ್ಟಿಸಿಟಿ ಸರ್ ಓಕೆ ಸರ್ ಯಾ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಗುಡ್ ಐಡಿಯಾ ವಿ ಕುಡ್ ರಿಶೆಡ್ಯೂಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಲ್ಟಿಕೋಲಿಯಾರಿಟಿ ಫಾರ್ ಸಮ್ ಅದರ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಓಕೆ even uh, it is no problem if we schedule it for tomorrow okay sir and let us ask uh, niranjan sir about ah, sir. the time that he wish and after that we can uh, inform mahesh sir also by that time Mah- let mahesh sir be ready okay sir okay sir okay hmm? Hmm. just keep informing mahesh sir also sir hmm? okay sir okay. so before that let us i mean let us uh, ask the time required for uh, niranjan hmm? i feel it is around 1 and a half 1 and a half hour to 1 hour 45 minutes is needed to him he has ah. already shared that uh, some uh, pdf format also ah sir let us see uh, uh, just uh, inconvenience is regretted please all participants uh, requested to in uh, in line uh, we are going to start uh, uh, presentation by uh, niranjan one more resource person who is going to speak on atherosclerosticity
बिना निरंजन सर सुन लीजिए स्टार्ट नाउ सर आ सर हाँ सर सर गुड आफ्टरनून हाँ सर स्टार्ट मार लो सर स्टार्ट मार स्टार्ट मार हाँ ओके ओके गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल आई वेलकम यू ऑल ऑल फैकल्टी मेंबर्स रिसर्च कॉलर्ड एंड ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट्स आई हार्टली वेलकम यू आई फील pleasure to welcome dr niranjan r assistant professor department of studies and research in economy vijayanagara shri krishna devaraya university bellary he has completed his masters 2016 in mysore university he got phd award in 2012 and he has cleared the net exam in 2012 he has published several books research articles and 15 journals sir has given several special lecture in various places his area of teaching and his research interested in open economy macro economics development economics issues on poverty and social inequality basic econometrics mathematical and statistical economics and so on sir has worked as assistant registrar in evaluation in the year of 2015 and 16 assistant registrar in administration sec section director department of physical education in 16 and 17 presently he is working as special officer in evaluation section i heartily welcome you dr niranjan sir in this technical session welcome you sir thank you abina for introduction for uh, giving an introduction uh, so good afternoon to everybody uh, uh, before i start uh, um, uh, the lecture on uh, atrocity i would like to thank uh, professor rangappa sir and uh, uchagoda sir for giving me an opportunity uh, to share my views and uh, thoughts on the problems of uh, regression okay so i will start uh, to i will share my screen yeah okay the uh, i hope the screen is shared yes so we are going to discuss on some of the uh, diagnostics tests or the problems which we are going to face in regression so we all know that uh, uh, and the most of the researchers you know that the problems of regressions are the three problems of regressions are the one is heteroscedasticity the another one is multicollinearity the another one is uh, autocorrelation so these are the problems which we are going to face in a, uh, in any regressional analysis so out of these three uh, uh, problems so i am going to take on the uh, the problem of heteroscedasticity so we will discuss on uh, the nature of the heteroscedasticity and uh, uh the uh, the types the variants of heteroscedasticity the uh, the consequences of heteroscedasticity and the remedy so what are the remedy suppose earlier we used to use when uh, the assumptions of the classical linear regression model that is the homoscedasticity is satisfied means we will be using uh, this uh, ordinary ols method ordinary least square method so uh, when we have uh, the etro that assumption is violated means so we have to use an another technique or the another method of estimation so that method of estimation is uh, generalized least square method or the wide's uh, atrocedasticity corrected standard errors and variances so these are the remedies which we are going to use in um, econometrics and Uh, after the remedies we'll uh, discuss on uh, uh, different uh, tests that means how to detect atrocedasticity so that means in econometrics there are several uh, tests are there to detect uh, atrocedasticity so we'll uh, uh, look into the, the major tests which we are available in the literature so there are some um, around uh, seven tests are available in the literature so in that seven tests all the seven tests we will discuss and out of that seven test majorityly three tests are used in application part that is in empirical uh, economics or the empiric empirics 
So we'll uh, do the uh, three tests we'll conduct in EVUs. We'll demonstrate it. And I've shared the, um, I've already shared uh, the EVUs work file, uh, so which you can download from the internet. So if you have downloaded that work file, so we can demonstrate all the three types of tests we can demonstrate. And after that, finally, uh, uh, the consequences I have discussed and remedies and the detection measures. So, so this is the general outline of the lecture which we are going to present uh, today. So starting with, uh, I hope the screen is shared and it is visible to everybody. So it is titled as Regression Diagnostics Retrosplastic. Okay, let me make it. Uh, okay. So, what is this atrocity is all about? So, you all uh, studied uh, the assumptions of the classical linear regression model. So, there are around ten assumptions. So, out of that assumptions, one of the important assumption is homoscedasticity. So homo's cadasticity means uh, the, uh, the error terms are distributed constantly. That means there is constant variance of the error terms. Error terms are, there is, uh, uh, as X observations, uh, X observation changes or the I observations changes, the error terms are, are having constant uh, variance. So this was the assumptions of the, assumption of the homo's uh, classical linear regression model, which is titled as homo's cadasticity. So if we violate this assumption, violate this assumption, so then we'll end up with what is called as heteroscedasticity. So uh, that was one of the important assumption of the uh, classical linear regression model. That means if you violate the, violate the uh, classical assumption, that assumption states that the observations of the error term that are drawn from a distribution as a constant variance. So that means in a sample, there will be so many observations. So on all the observations have, will be having a constant variance, but, uh, but in reality, this assumption is unrealistic. So if you take uh, any cross-section data, so all observation will be having different variance. So it cannot be, we cannot say that all observations can have a constant variance. So this assumption uh, is very theoretical and it is in reality, it is unrealistic. So hence we are going to, uh, in application part, we are going to violate this assumption. And when we violate this assumption, then we'll end up with our uh, error terms are not going to be constant. So their variance are not going to be constant. So when their variance are not going to be constant, theoretically it is termed as heteroscedasticity. Heteroscedasticity means unequal variance, unequal variance. So like what we uh, you all know that autocorrelation is again one of the problem of uh, problems we face in uh, estimation of regression so in autocorrelation you will have you will come across a different degrees of autocorrelation so likewise in heteroscedasticity also we will be having different versions of heteroscedasticity so that means pure versions and impure versions so i am going to explain what is a pure version of heteroscedasticity and impure version of heteroscedasticity so pure version of heteroscedasticity means you have taken a model. Suppose assume that I'm giving an example. You assume that you have taken a model and that model is 100% correct. That means you have, you have specified your model correctly. You have, you have specified your model, uh, model correctly. So when, even though you are, when you have uh, specified your model correctly, if you face heteroscedasticity, that is because of again error terms. So that means pure heteroscedasticity is caused by the error term of a correctly specified variable, correctly specified model. So that means you have constructed a model, that model is correctly specified. Correctly specified means you have uh, included the relevant independent variables, you have taken the uh, relevant uh, transformation or the log transformation or the, it is a linear. So the model is correctly specified. So even though the model is correctly specified, if you come across heteroscedasticity, that type of heteroscedasticity is called as pure version of heteroscedasticity, and that is caused by error or the disturbance terms, so which we call in literature. So impure version of heteroscedasticity is caused by specification error. 
we all know that uh, 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 one of the assumption of the classical linear regression model is we assume that the model is correctly specified. That means it is the model is correctly specified. It is theoretically sound, and we have included the appropriate and relevant variables, and it is in uh, correct form. Correct form means it is in a linear form. Okay, so the model is correctly specified. So suppose if you do not uh, specify the model correctly, if you have, uh, if you have committed a specification error, that means specification bias, such as you have omitted an, a very important uh, relevant variable, or if you have omitted a very pertinent variable which is influencing on the dependent variable. So in that case, it is called as impure version of heteroscedasticity. So that means like autocorrelation, we have uh, two versions of uh, heteroscedasticity. The one is pure version of heteroscedasticity. The another one is impure version of heteroscedasticity. Pure version of heteroscedasticity is, is a function of error term. That means that heteroscedasticity arises because of error term. And the impure version of uh, heteroscedasticity arises because of because you have committed a specification error. That means specification error means you have omitted a very important variable from the model. So these two are the uh, versions of the uh, heteroscedasticity. We will discuss each versions. Uh, we'll discuss what is pure version, how it is, uh, how the uh, heteroscedasticity occurs in a pure version. And again, we will discuss impure version, how the heteroscedasticity occurs in impure versions also. Okay. So theoretically, uh, when we say heteroscedasticity, that heteroscedasticity is related to pure versions of heteroscedasticity. That means it is a, uh, I have written here, pure, Heteroscedasticity is a function of error term UI. So UI is the error term uh, of a correctly specified model. So that occurs that occurs because of violation of the classical assumption. We all know that heteroscedasticity arises because of the violation of classical assumption. And we also know what is the classical assumption. The classical assumption is homoscedasticity, that is constant variance of the error term. So when we violate, uh, when the error terms do not have constant variance, so then the heteroscedasticity arises. So when we read in any textbook uh, or any econometrics textbooks, so heteroscedasticity means uh, generally it is related to pure heteroscedasticity because we always assume that and we always uh, presume that the model which we have uh, uh, which we have taken up for analysis, empirical analysis, it is correctly specified. It is correctly specified, hence it is related to, uh, and we, and in that correctly specified model, where the heteroscedasticity arises because of error terms. So I will explain what is error terms, and how the pure version of heteroscedasticity arises. And uh, and again, I will take a minute to ex uh, to uh, to explain uh, the uh, the classical assumption itself. We all know that uh, the classical assumption, the constant variance assumption, that is homoscedasticity assumption, what does it implies? It implies that we say that error terms are drawn from a same distribution. Because uh, suppose you have taken it, uh, and we all know that heteroscedasticity arises more generally, most, most of the time heteroscedasticity, the problem of heteroscedasticity arises in a cross-sectional data. So in a cross-sectional data, you, you suppose assume that sample size is around 100. Okay, so each observation will be having one error term. Each observation will be having one, one, one error term. That means one to nth number of error terms will be there. So we will be having a distribution. So all these error distribution, uh, that means 100 distributions will be having a constant variance constant variance. So that is what almost cadasticity is. So you have collected an uh, data. So that data you will be having your sample size is some, assume it as 100. And each observation, that means each household, you take an household, you have collected um, household income and household consumption expenditure data. Your sample size is 100. Each household will be having consumption expenditure and an error term. So all these 100 error terms will be having a constant variance. So that is the assumption of homoscedasticity. And we also say that all these 100 uh, error terms are distributed with zero mean and constant variance. That means uh, that was the normality assumption. 
the error terms are distributed with zero mean and the uh, which you are most of you are know in that Gujarati book UI distributed with norm zero mean and constant variant. So that was related to almost catastrophe. So if we violate this assumption, that means our unread observation, all unread households having unequal variance. So that means they do not have uh, same variance. So each household is consumption is varying, each household income is varying. Then in that case, the error term variance also changes. So that is unequal variance. So when we come across this, it, we are going to violate the assumption and that is what we treat it as heteroscedasticity in simple terms. Okay, and uh, this assumption is also unrealistic. Homoscedasticity assumption is unrealistic. Okay, so here, so uh, we'll start with what is pure version of uh, uh, heteroscedasticity is, uh, so here, uh, the pure version of heteroscedasticity is a function of error term in a correctly specified model. It occurs because of violation of classical model. Okay, so that's what I already explained. So it assumes that so homoscedasticity, how we notational form, how we write it, right, means uh, variance of ui is equal to expected uh, expected value of ui square is equal to sigma square. So if sigma square, we say that sigma square is constant. So this one, so this sigma square is constant. So this is almost cadasticity, variance of UI. UI is our error term and we call it as, we say that the variance of this error term is equal to sigma square and this sigma square, we call it as constant. So I is equal to one to N. So what is this I it means? First observation, second observation, error term of the first observation, error term of the second observation, error term of the third observation, till n number of uh, 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 observations, the variance of the error term is constant. So that is the assumption. So now we are we are going to violate the assumption of the classical linear regression model, where we say that variance of ui, variance of the error term. Uh, ui is equal to expected value of ui square, which is equal to sigma i square, sigma i square. So again, i is equal to one to n. So if you notice the difference between homoscedasticity and heteroscedasticity is this subscript. Subscript is i subscript, i subscript. So in homoscedasticity assumption, we will get only sigma square. In heteroscedasticity assumption, we will get sigma i square. So why why there is a difference? The i i is again from one to n. So it says one to n there is unequal variance. So if all these one to n are having constant uh, constant variance means so then it need not to write sigma i square for homoscedasticity. So hence for heteroscedasticity this subscript i. Okay, so I heteroscedasticity uh, error terms variance, it can change depending on the observation. So that means first observation uh, in heteroscedasticity, first observation variance is different, second observation variance is different, third observation error term variance is a difference. Okay, different till nth observations. So for that reason, this is I which is one unequal to two, two is equal to un unequal to three. The variance of first is unequal to second. The variance of second is unequal to third, okay? So, but here it, it does not happen like that. So if in the homoscedasticity, since all is constant, need, it need not to write. If all hundred observations having constant variance, I need not to write I to N. Okay, so that is the reason homoscedasticity, it implies, the notation implies just sigma square. And for heteroscedasticity, it is sigma i square, okay? Heteroscedasticity around can change depending, so that is, it change depends upon the observations. Okay, so it explained here much better. See here, in sigma square, sigma square is homoscedasticity. In homoscedasticity, the distribution of the error term as a constant variance. So the observations are continually drawn from the same distribution. So in sigma square, the distribution of the error term is having constant. That means in all the hundred observation, which I, we have assumed as an hypothetical example, our sample size is hundred, assume it as hundred. So in all the hundred observations, the error term variance is constant. So that is homoscedasticity. From one observation to hundredth observation, 
all the error term distribution is the error term variance is constant and they are drawn from a same distribution and that distribution has mean value zero and variance is constant okay so in the case of heteroscedasticity here sigma i square sigma i square the variance differs differs from first observation to second observation second observation to third observation till n hundred observation the variance of the error term is different and they are drawn from different observations why they are drawn from different observ uh, different distribution means each one follows a different distribution because their variance is different okay suppose if we take here suppose assume the this one the, the narrow distribution has first uh, first observation and the wide distribution has second observation so this is the distribution of the error terms so the error term first observation distribution is too narrow and the second observation distribution is wide that means there is difference the distribution the variance uh, the distribution of variance is a different from first observation to the second observation so that means there is unequal variance so this is heteroscedasticity likewise from first observation to 100th observation the error term distribution will be having unequal variance from one observation to the another observation they do not have equal vary equal uh, variance of the error term okay so now why there is a variance now the question arises is that why there is variance in the error term why does there will be changes in the error terms why the why there will be changes in the error terms that is again because this is the characteristics of a cross section data suppose when we take a cross section data we will be having uh, data for a particular period of time and we will be having so many entities so many entities and each entity will be having different characteristics so when they have a different characteristics obviously we will be having a divergent error terms unequal variance in the error terms so suppose if you you can uh, read this one sigma i square is heteroscedasticity heteroscedasticity often occurs due to wide disparity between the largest and smallest observed values suppose i have given an example of uh, consumption income of 100 households in all the 100 households we do not have uh, uh, like all 100 households do not have same equal uh, same income or same consumption we will be having a lower income category we will be having a upper income category we will be having a middle income category upper middle income category so all these categories have different uh, characteristics the different consumption characteristics so we do not have a uniform observations so when we have a largest consumption from a highest income group and the lowest variability in consumption in a lowest income group so there will be wide disparity so because of this disparity divergent divergence we will be having a variance in the error terms so we will be having some observation we are narrowly distributed some observations are having widely distributed so this was one of the uh, reasons for heteroscedasticity and we can say that uh, 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 in a sample we will be having error terms uh, distribution of a so the larger ob observation will be having a larger distribution and a smaller observation will be having a smaller distribution suppose in an uh, which have given an example of uh, uh, we have taken uh, assumed an example of 100 uh, households income and consumption so larger uh, household will be having a larger consumption and a smaller income will be having a smaller consumption and that again that in in influence on the variance of the error term so for that reason the there will be variance in the error term and that variance is what we call it as heteroscedasticity so that is what in the left side we have homoscedasticity we assume that all 100 observations variance in the error term remains constant in the left hand side there that means they will be drawn from a same distribution all 100 observations will have a same distribution so which is unrealistic so this is what the assumption and if we violate that assumption that means no all observation cannot follow uniform distribution all 100 observation cannot have a constant variance so they may have a divergent variance each observation will be having a different variance so when we have 
violate that assumption, this situation arises across catastasis. So when this situation arises, what will happen to the estimators beta one cap? What will be the value of beta one cap, whether it is unbiased, whether it is efficient, and whether it is minimum variance estimator? The, what happens to the value of beta one cap? So whether it is linear, whether it is unbiased, whether it is efficient estimator? What happens to the T value and what happens to the F value, whether they are consistent? So all these are the problems which we are going to face when we have a trust problem, which we are going to discuss in the entire lecture. Uh, so going moving to, I hope you have understood the uh, uh, difference between what is a homo scedasticity and heteroscedasticity and in notational form. Homo scedasticity is sigma square, heteroscedasticity is sigma i square. And why there is a difference, why we are going to use subscript i. So if all the observation are same, having constant variance, I need not to write one to n here for homo scedasticity. So for that reason, it is just simple here, sigma square. So since in all observations, each observation is having a different distribution, then I have to write i, which is equal to one first observation, second first observation will be having a different distribution, second observation will be having a different distribution, third observation will be having a different distribution. So for that reason, for heteroscedasticity, subscript sigma square i, i which is equal to one to n. And then, uh, so this one, uh, what we uh, say the heteroscedasticity, uh, pure versions of heteroscedasticity, where we said that in the first slide, we said that it is a function of error term. Okay, so that we are going to discuss here now. So in the model, the uh, in the model, the variance of the error term is related to an exogenous variable zi. So I'm going to explain what is zi. Uh, okay, so the variance of an error term is related to an exogenous variable as zi. Suppose assume that uh, yi is equal to, uh, uh, we have to uh, assume that's a simple uh, linear regression model here, yi is equal to beta zero plus beta one x one i plus beta two x two i plus u i. We are concerned of this one, u i. And we are telling that this u i, the variance of u i is equal to sigma square z i square. So this heteroscedasticity, this u i, the variance, this u i variance is not constant, this it is heteroscedasticity. And this heteroscedasticity arises because of zi square. Zi is a proportional factor. I will explain what it is. Uh, Z may or may not be of the excess in the equation, may or may not be explanatory variable in the equation, but it is called as a proportionality factor. So what is this proportionality I'm going to explain because yi is equal to beta 0, beta 1, x1, i plus beta 2, x2, i and ui. So we are focusing this, the last part, last component, ui component, and we are telling that this ui component is having unequal variance. And we are telling that this unequal variance, variance of ui is equal to, so that is due to sigma square and zi square. Okay. So so this is in the in the left hand side, homo scedasticity with respect to uh, zi, the variance of ui is same no matter what the value of zi is. So zi is proportionality factor. So I will, when we go to the heteroscedasticity in the right side part, I will explain what is uh, proportionality factor is. So in the uh, in the left uh, left hand side of the figure, as there is we move from one zi Z, uh, x1 to x2 x2 to x3, the, there is constant variance. So this one, there is constant variance here. So all observations are uniform distributions. So uniform distribution, this is a distribution of uh, what we can say the homoscedasticity. The error terms are, are having uniform distributions. So it is saying a probability distributions of the error terms and it is having uniform distribution. Suppose mm -hmm. if we come back here, so in this, uh, it is heteroscedastic. That means the probability distribution, the error term, this one is narrowly distributed. Again, this one is broadly distributed. 
again this one is even broadly distributed that means the as the uh, is the variable from x1 to x2 x2 to x3 the variance of the error term is increasing variance of the uh, variance of the error term is increasing so why this variance of error term is increasing because of you you have to look here variance of ui formula wise we are telling that variance of ui is equal to sigma square zi square so this is zi is a proportionality factor proportionality factor means suppose uh, there is a change in x1 to x2 due to change in x1 to x2 there is an unequal variance what proportionality there is a change because when we have taken 100 uh, uh, 100 uh, sample of 100 households suppose assume that a 10% change in uh, uh, higher income household is not equal to a 10% uh, 10% change in income of the higher income household is not equal to a 10% change in the income of a higher lower income household so that means uh, that is a proportionality factor so this proportionality factor square with homogeneous elasticity we will get the uh, the variance variance of ui that means uh, what to what extent it was uh, Uh, uh the what extent the error term changes zi is a proportionality factor because the variance of the error term changes proportionally to the square of zi square so that means uh, as i already given an example consumption income example uh, uh what happened larger income household um uh, if there is a change in their income to the tune of 10% so that is different and uh, lower income household a 10% change in income so that is different so each observation change proportionality factor change so that is going to influence on the variance of ui to the sigma square times the zi square so heteroscedasticity with respect to zi the variance of ui changes as a function of zi that means in this example heteroscedasticity example the variance is an increasing function of zi that means as here x keep on increasing this the proportionality of change is here increasing so the proportionality of change is increasing due to the change in increasing the variance is also changing because the variance of error term ui is nothing but sigma square times zi squares so zi square what is the proportionality of change So suppose from x1 to x2 what is the proportionality of change so that change multiplied with the constant variance we'll get the the second observation variance error term variance and suppose from x2 to to x3 what is the proportionality of change in the change in income suppose assume that ox axis is income so x1 x1 is uh, uh, one income category x2 is one income observation x3 is one income category so x1 to x2 what is the proportionality of change in income so this proportionality of income will influence us on the variance and again from x2 to x3 so what is the proportionality of change so this proportionality of change again influence on the variance so that is uh, proportionality factor times sigma square because this was a constant earlier sigma square is constant constant multiplied by this proportionality factor will get the variance of the error term so this is what we treat as heteroscedasticity that is uh, unequal variance from one observation to the n first observation to the second observation second to till n observation so what is the changes proportionality changes and how it is influencing on the variance of the error term so so that was the uh, pure version of uh, heteroscedasticity which uh, which arises because because if you look into this one this error variance this uh, the changes in the error term is a function of now it's a this one uh, we say that uh, pure version of heteroscedasticity depend is a function of error term that means changes in error term is influence on the pure heteroscedasticity and this uh depends on sigma square and zi square 
and impure version of atroscedasticity and this is caused due to uh, uh, this is caused due to uh, error in specification such as omitted variable bias omitted variable bias is caused due to error in specification such as omitted variable bias uh, this is in the sense uh, omitted variable uh, bias so again this is one of the uh, uh, assumption which we have studied in the classical linear regression model that is the model is correctly specified that means when we have taken a regression model that regression model is correctly specified in the sense we have included the appropriate variable independent variable which is going to influence on the dependent variable so which we are not omitted a relevant variable or we have not included an irrelevant variable in the model because what happens if we omitted an important variable means so that variable will go and sit in the error term so what if we include an irrelevant variable in an uh, in a, as an independent variable means that, that may not have an influence on the dependent variable okay so that uh, specification bias will affect the uh, atroscedasticity that influences atroscedasticity and because this here the portion of the omitted variable effect is absorbed by the error term suppose i have given an example here uh, uh, that is uh, again this is a, a relating to trade which i say mi is a imports of a nation so imports of a nation depends on gdp and relative price pr means relative price relative price means the ratio of domestic price of a good to the world price so domestic eco, a product domestic price relative to the world price so what is the ratio so we have uh, an uh, an hypothetical model here imports of a nation depends on its gdp and the relative price and those are positively related with uh, imports and plus an error term so now in this correctly specified model suppose if i exclude this gdp if i exclude this gdp and construct an alternative model where mi is equal to beta 0 plus beta 2 pr plus ui so here i have in this model constructed newly constructed second model i have excluded the gdp so now this gdp influence now it will sit in the the second error term here so ui star is a second error term so and this ui star second error term now it's a it is what first error term plus a gdp beta 1 gdp so that means i am whatever the change in the now this ui star variance whatever the error term now it is going to change so this change is now again influenced by gdp because gdp is a one of the important variable which should be included in the regression model but we have committed a specification error we have excluded that variable so now that excluded variable now it is going to influence on the error term. So that means the error term variance now is influenced by GDP because we have excluded, because the price ratio does not act as a proxy for GDP. So this we have taken the price ratio as a one of the one, one in explanatory variable. And this explanatory variable is not a proxy for GDP. So GDP, GDP component, now it will sit in a another uh, the second error term ui so if the gdp increases means the larger income country having a larger uh, gdp small income country will be will be having a smaller gdp so now that small country and the large country influence now it is going to influence this error term ui error term so this is one the impure version of atroscedasticity so now because of this gdp now the error term is going to change this error term variance is going to change that is because of omitted variable bias so because we have omitted any relevant variable so that is what we call it as an impure version of atroscedasticity so ui star is atroscedastic so this effect uh, if this effect has atroscedastic component the error term of the misspecified equation might be so okay the same thing which i already explained Okay, suppose now here, uh, why if I exclude an important variable from a regression model, so now it will sit in the 
residual residual means error term suppose if i draw a graph of ei is residual ei or ui it is epsilon i or ui both are residual so now this residual if i graph it on gdp it shows a distribution like this that means as the gdp increases the error term variance is also increasing that means this is a this portion is the gdp of a smaller countries and it's showing a smaller variance so larger countries as we move to a larger country the variance are increasing because this gdp we have not included in this model we have committed a specification error because of this specification error now we are facing the problem of atherosclerosticity ui which we call it as impure atherosclerosticity and if i draw once we i run a regression i will get the residuals of this this residuals i am going to draw a scatter graph on gdp so that is what i am written here the omission of gdp has forced the error term to incorporate the impact of gdp causing the distribution of the error term to be having a wider that means higher variance for a larger values of gdp than a smaller ones so suppose if a bigger country with a bigger gdp will be having a larger variance in the error terms than a smaller country with smaller variance so that is what the we are going to commit the atherosclerosticity problem arises because of specification variable also specification bias also that means we omit an important variable which is influencing on the dependent variable but uh, the transformation uh, if we have to uh, use log instead of using log we have, not, we have used uh, absolute value so that may not create so much problem so uh, transforming the variables but uh, that is again a miss specification but that may not cause more problem like at uh, more problem Uh, in unequal variance than this one omitting a variable will cause more uh, more problem uh, problems relating to atherosclerosticity than a uh, transformation of variables so now uh, okay so this uh, atherosclerosticity is likely to occur mostly in the cross sectional data and uh, uh why does it uh, uh, occurs in cross sectional data because we all know that because cross sectional data uh, collected at a particular period of time and each observations will be having a different uh, characteristics suppose if we give an example means suppose we want to uh, find the relationship between female female literacy rate and maternal mortality rate in india across states suppose i will take one year for all 30 states 32 states i am going to collect the information on female literacy rate and the maternal mortality rate okay so suppose a state like kerala will be having a higher literacy rate a state like bihar or orissa will be having a lower literacy rate that means states will vary from a very the information relating to literacy rate and maternal mortality there will be significant variance will be there so due to that variance so we will be face we will face the problem of atherosclerosticity in cross sectional data apart from cross sectional data what are the other two situations wherein we are going to face the problem of atherosclerosticity so sometimes we we may face the problem of atherosclerosticity in time series data also so when we are going to face the problem of atherosclerosticity in time series data when we have a when the dependent variable when the dependent variable is having significant variation atherosclerosticity can occur in a time series model with significant amount of variation in the dependent variable so we assume that uh, there will be uh, variation uh, classical linear regression model also says that the x value should not be fixed in repeated sampling repeated sampling so but there should not be more amount of variation so if the the dependent variable varies changes fluctuations there means there also uh, there may be uh, the atherosclerosticity occurs in time and wherein uh, we can face the problem of atheros the quality of data so when we have a concern about the quality of the data so sigma i square can occur in a model where the quality of the data 
collection changes drastically which are so suppose if you have poor data collection air traffic elasticity problem apart from that with the if we improve the data collection technique the last uh, sentence with the improvement in the data collection technique the uh, the variance of the error term will definitely decline suppose if we improve the data collection technique or the methodology so the trust elasticity will definitely uh, decline so then so this was the uh, version of uh, pure and impure version of uh, air traffic elasticity and then how it is going to arise then the consequences of air traffic elasticity consequences of air traffic elasticity that means what happens to uh, what happens uh, to the regression coefficients so if we uh, estimate uh, estimate a model with atrocitous the atrocitousity so what are the consequences which we are going to face uh, with the atrocitous uh, problem of atrocitous so if the error term uh, in our equation Uh, in any regression model if it is having a uh, uh, constant way it does not cause bias in the coefficient estimates so we say that our uh, ordinary least square method so ols method and this ols method sat- what does it satisfies it satisfies the gauss markov theorem blue and they are called as best linear unbiased estimators so when we having the atrocitous elasticity if we are going to use the ordinary least square method so what happened to our estimates our estimates do not get biased our estimates do not get biased that means this is because uh, the expected value of beta betas will be equal to true betas that means bias means what what is that bias so this is what bias is without atrocitous elasticity with atrocitous elasticity the expected value of beta cap will be equal to the beta true beta that means uh, however so the beta distribution will be centered around the true beta the beta uh, cap distributions will be centered around the true beta cap true beta uh, they are not going to be uh, biased estimators so but what the problem which we are going to face is they are no longer efficient estimators because uh, because of atrocitous elasticity uh, they are no longer efficient estimators so why they are not efficient estimators means now the variances the will be having a larger variance suppose if we estimate the regression uh, with the presence of atrocitous elasticity though we get a uh, unbiased estimator but our coefficients regression coefficients will be having uh, they are not efficient estimator so why they are not efficient estimates means because they will not having a minimum estimators or the, sorry the minimum variance so that means when we call an uh, estimator efficient so best linear unbiased efficient estimator so when we are going to call it as a efficient estimator so when an coefficient is having a minimum variance that means may variance of beta 2 cap will be minimum variance of beta 1 cap is minimum standard error lesser standard error so and then we can say that the our coefficients are efficient estimators so in that case with the presence of uh, presence of uh, atrocitous elasticity beta uh, caps may not be efficient estimators because they will be having larger variance since they will be having larger variance we will be having a larger confidence interval confidence interval will be larger so if we have a larger confidence interval we will get t and f statistics f test we will get an inaccurate results so this is one of the important or the major cause of atrocitous elasticity or the consequence of atrocitous elasticity that means though we will get uh, uh, unbiased estimators but they are no longer efficient estimators because we will be having larger variance larger variance beta 1 cap variance will be larger beta 2 cap variance will be larger so when they have larger variance then we will be having the confidence interval will be larger so if the confidence interval is larger means our t and f test will get inaccurate results 
okay so the betas are unbiased but they are not efficient estimators so that is one of the consequence of atherosclerosticity and again the second consequence of atherosclerosticity is it will affect a minimum variance property as i said uh, the uh, gauss markov theorem property is it uh, if it has to satisfy that property means our estimators should have minimum variance okay so uh, this Uh, atherosclerosticity it will affect the property of minimum variance that means atherosclerosticity increases the variances of the beta distributions our coefficient value of the of our uh, parameter which we are going to estimate beta cap so that distribution the variance of the beta distribution will increases because of atherosclerosticity again we know that that variance increases because of proportionality factor zi okay so the minimum variance of gauss markov theorem we cannot prove because our estimators are no longer efficient estimators because of the presence of atherosclerosticity and because of this minimum uh, uh, ols will misestimate the true beta ols will misestimate the true beta cap and the another one is uh, sigma uh what are, what is the another consequence of another consequence of uh, atherosclerosticity is in the presence of atherosclerosticity if we use ols ordinary least square method to estimate betas or the, uh, the coefficient values it is going to underestimate the variance and the standard errors so that is another consequence so it is going to underestimate the variance and standard errors of the betas that means atherosclerosticity tend to increase the variances variances and standard errors of coefficients and the ols will underestimate it okay so in that case when the uh, variance and the standard errors are uh, underestimated uh, we cannot depend on neither the t statistics we cannot depend on nor the f statistics we cannot we can depend so both we cannot depend so why we, we cannot depend means with atherosclerosticity our ols provide higher t square values leading to reject the null hypothesis where we should not reject the null hypothesis that means uh, a hypothesis which uh, which should not be rejected so now because of the larger variance now we are rejecting that null hypothesis because of uh, higher t square values that means uh, actually we have to get a lower t square values so that we will get only when we correct this atherosclerosticity so because of this uh, uh the problem of we are now we are uh, facing the problem of atherosclerosticity our ols estimators ordinary least square estimators are no longer efficient estimators and they provide higher t values so if we have an irt values then we have to reject an, a null hypothesis which we should not be rejected so that is the major consequence of uh, uh, this one uh, atherosclerosticity and uh, the another one is uh, we can have with i'm showing here without atherosclerosticity and with atherosclerosticity it is a distribution so Oh, this is again you can correlate this with unbiasedness property of the uh, uh, ordinary least square method suppose if we have atherosclerosticity and if we use ordinary least square method the estimate beta cap estimate so that is the uh, its mean value is equal to true beta with atherosclerosticity without atherosclerosticity suppose if i estimate the beta cap beta cap mean value is equal to beta so that means in both the distribution the beta is centered it is centered but if you look at the bottom the variance variance with atherosclerosticity it is having larger variance without atherosclerosticity it is having smaller variance so what we need is if our estimators should be efficient means we have to we will we should have this minimum variance property though our beta is beta cap is unbiased but it is no longer efficient because now it is having a wider distribution if you look at the bottom though they are beta the true beta is centered so, uh, whatever the estimated beta beta cap value if we take 
mean value expected value of beta 2 that is equal to true beta but if we look into the variance property then we are not fulfilling that variance property gauss markov theorem variance minimum variance property so then we are violating that property and hence our estimators may not be uh, efficient estimators without uh, when we have the, with atherosclerosity this was the uh, consequence of atherosclerosity that means sigma i square increases the beta now what is the remedy uh, what is the remedy uh, uh, remedy suppose we have uh, uh, atherosclerosity we are facing atherosclerosity now what is the remedy so how we can correct this atherosclerosity so the we can correct atherosclerosity by an alternative method of estimation earlier we we uh, uh, we estimate by using ordinary least square method now we can estimate the same model by using generalized least square method so why generalized least square what is the difference between ordinary least square method and uh, generalized least square method so we we'll, uh, will spend a uh, minute or so on discussing uh, the difference between ordinary least square method and the generalized least square method and then we will go to these notation so how we can derive the generalized least square uh, method and please uh, uh please remember that generalized least square and weighted least square gls and wls they are used interchangeably that means they are both they are the method of estimation uh gls and wls we are using we can use these two methods interchangeably now why why we have to study gls so we are uh uh we are uh, facing the problem of atherosclerosity now so with the problem of atherosclerosity our ordinary least square methods are no longer efficient so if they are no longer efficient means though we may get beta values but our uh, variance of betas are uh, very large our t and f statistics are inaccurate results for that reason now we have to use an alternative method so this alternative method is generalized least square method so why we are going to use the reason is see uh, uh, as i already um, uh, pointed out this atherosclerosity uh, majoritily it arises in uh, cross sectional data right cross sectional data so when we have a cross sectional data so there will be considerable variability considerable uh, changes across the observations so we have to give appropriate weight suppose a observation comes from a distribution where it is having lesser variability so we have to give more weight to that for a observation which comes from a distribution where it is having larger variability we have to give lesser weight for that so gls uses this method a observation which comes from a distribution which is have, which is more fluctuating for that observation gls give less weight for a observation which give which comes from a distribution which is having lesser fluctuations lesser variability for that uh, uh, gls gives more weight because when there is lesser fluctuation lesser vari uh, variation means variability means all the observation would be clustered towards the mean value in a regression line is clustered towards the mean value then we can say that it is an efficient estimator so if the observations are spread scattered means we cannot say it is an uh, efficient so for that reason what gls generalized least square does is that it gives weights it gives weights so uh, what is that weight it gives weight for a observation where there is more weight for a observation where it is uh, lesser variability and gives less weight for a distribution uh, which is having higher uh, variability so that is the uh, uh, that is the reason we are going to use generalized least square on the other end what does ols does 
ordinary least square method does is that it gives equal weightage higher uh, for a higher income household also it gives equal weightage for a lower income weight, income household also it gives a same weightage so we have to give weightage based on its dispersion how it is spread from its mean value how it is clustered but the ordinary least square gives equal weightage for all the observations so that is the difference between generalized least square method and the ordinary least square method so for that reason uh, in order to find an efficient estimators we are going to use generalized least square method when we are going to have a problem of heteroscedasticity when we are facing the problem of heteroscedasticity that means the heteroscedasticity is itself as unequal variance spread how the error terms are spread error term which is a larger variation we will give lesser weight error term which is closer to the mean value we are we are going to give more weight so that is the um, uh, that is the that is what the generalized least square does and it gives an efficient estimators okay. and uh, uh, hence we can say that by using generalized least square method it gives efficient estimator so how uh, it gives i will explain here how uh, the generalized least square gives an efficient estimator how it is going to uh, uh, how it is going to give weights also so because weight is more important now because we are assigning weights for a uh, distribution which is having lesser variability and for as well as for a larger variability observation also so um, while we are discussing generalized least square assume a model we have a model yi is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 xi plus ui this is a uh, uh, simple linear regression model assume now and for simplicity in order to for simple uh, algebraic uh, manipulation in order to understand that so we write yi is equal to beta 1 x 0 i plus beta 2 x i plus u i both equations are same both equations are identical but we are writing just for 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 our purpose of algebraic manipulation for in order to make ourselves easier suppose if i say x 0 i is equal to 1 means then both equations are identical 1 multiplied by beta 1 is beta 1 so y i is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 x i plus u i so both equations are same so now assuming that sigma i square sigma i square is heteroscedasticity variance so suppose now assuming we assume that we know the error a variance how much there is changes how much the uh, there is a variance in the error term suppose if i assume that we know that that variance so now by divide, we will divide the above equation by that variance sigma i to obtain so one side we divide we will get that above equation so this equation now we are going to divide by sigma i okay sigma i so y i divided by sigma i which is equal to beta 1 x 0 i divided by sigma i plus beta 2 x i divided by sigma i plus u i divided by sigma i so the same equation first equation the first equation in order to be uh, make it easy simpler we have written in terms of second equation here x0 i add, uh, we have added x0 i that x0 uh, x0 i is nothing but 1 it is same identical now in order to derive the efficient estimate in order to in order to understand the behavior of the error term now we assume that the variance are known and we divide that equation by y divided by sigma i and this equation we write simplistically we write it as uh, again for our uh, our purpose in uh, in understanding very uh, easily we write it as y i star is equal to beta 1 star x 0 i star plus beta 2 star x i star plus u i star suppose now if i take expected value or the variance for the new error term our new error term is this one u i is our new error term so for this new error term if i take expected value or the variance now this will be equal to this should be constant okay 
that star the, the transformed variables divide. okay the purpose of transforming the, this model this model the purpose of transforming is to observe the behavior of the error term how it is going to behave okay suppose i okay the transformed ui so what so that is what i told here this is our transformed model now for this ui i am going to take variance now okay so now the transformed error term the variance of ui which is nothing but expected value of ui square which is equal to expected value of ui divided by sigma square because this ui star is nothing but ui divided by sigma i this one so expected value of this expected value of ui is nothing but ui divided by sigma square here expected value of ui divided by sigma square with simple uh, manipulation we can say that 1 divided by sigma square expected value of ui square and this expected value of ui square is nothing but expected value of ui square is nothing but sigma i square right so 1 divided by sigma i square and sigma i square this sigma i square and sigma i square will get cancelled this is what here since expected value of ui square is equal to sigma i square so here instead of expected value of ui square we will write sigma i square so suppose this will get cancelled sigma i square sigma i square will get cancelled the remaining is one so one is constant now we say that the variance of the transformed error term is now homoscedastic so once we the now the uh, the same model now we have transformed so now the transformed model error term now is constant or the almost cadastic that means this new model y i star is equal to beta 1 star x 0 star plus beta 2 star x i star plus u i star this model now is almost cadastic because we if you see this sigma i square is inversely proportional so this sigma i square is inversely proportional to the x inversely proportional to the dependent variable so it is assigning weights so if we divide this and do some simple math is equal to 1 so 1 is constant so for this transfer model now we have transformed the model for this transfer model now if we use ols method we have transformed the model for this transfer model if we if we use ordinary square method then we we are going to get bestly our estimators are efficient estimators we will get minimum variance estimators okay so beta 1 star and beta 2 star so this is this method is called generalized least square method and this generalized method least square are best linear unbiased estimators earlier beta 1 cap and beta 2 cap we are going to face the problem of heteroscedasticity in the problem of heteroscedasticity facing if we use ols that is not going to be blue so if we have this problem means then we have to overcome this problem means you transform the model you transform the model by giving weights and for once you transform the model for that model if you apply ols our parameters our estimators will now become efficient estimators so this method is now is interchangeably it is called as gls method and the wls method so we all know that uh, when we estimate beta 1 cap in a simple linear regression model using ordinary square method we have to get, obtain the formula of beta 1 cap and beta 2 cap so beta 1 cap is equal to y bar minus beta 2 cap x bar beta 2 cap is equal to summation x i y i divided by summation x i square y so here also if i want to estimate if i want to find the value of beta 2 cap value of beta 1 cap in a gls method means i have to find the formula formula for beta 1 can start formula to beta 2 star in a gls method so how do i derive it how do i derive it so this is a simple uh, simple uh, steps which you all learnt in a in a simple linear regression model the same way it is we are using in a gls method the mechanics of estimating beta 1 star and beta 2 star these beta 1 star and beta 2 star are now they are gls estimators so to gls estimators so how do we opt what is the formula for beta 1 star and beta 2 star 
but the beta one star, the formula remains uh, the OLS formula, it remains the same, but the change is only in the beta two star, uh, the formula. So how do we obtain? We should know that the population regression function, we have to derive the sample regression function, like what we have uh, learned in the simple linear regression models. Population regression function is yi divided by sigma i, which is equal to beta one, x zero i sigma i plus beta two x one divided by sigma i plus u i divided by sigma i. So this is our model which we have transformed. That is the GLS transform model. So GLF transformed model population regression function, which can which is which is nothing but y i star is equal to beta one star x zero star plus beta two star x i star plus u i star. Okay. And the second one is sample regression function. Sample regression function. Sample regression function for the GLS is y divided by sigma i. We know that beta one cap x zero i plus sigma i plus u i cap is equal to sigma i, or we can briefly like this. So in order to obtain GLS estimators, what we have to do? We have to minimize the errors. Minimize the errors. A residual sum of space. We have to minimize the er errors. So errors is summation u i cap square summation u i cap square, which it's which is similar to the two variable regression model or the OLS, which uh, you may have studied. Summation u i cap square we have is the is, is what we have to minimize it. So that we have to minimize to what with respect to y i that is the actual minus our estimated value. So this is what we are going to estimate. So suppose if you look. Y is population actual value minus beta one cap star x zero i. So this is what, what we are going to estimate. So our residuals is equal to actual minus estimated. Estimated. So this can also be written as this also be can oh, where it is. It can also be written as because the summation u i sigma i square is nothing but u i divided by sigma i cap square. So it is equal to summation y i is a simple, which is uh, exp, uh, which is uh, writing in the form of GLS y i divided by sigma i minus beta one x zero i divided by sigma i beta two cap star x i divided by this whole square. So we have to minimize the errors respect to the uh, our uh, betas. So now. Uh, as I said, already said, we are going to use the GLS and WLS interchangeably. Uh, so this is the way unwe unweighted least square method minimize. So this is what the unweighted there ordinary least square method. UI summation UI cap square is equal to summation YI minus beta one cap minus beta two. This is unweighted. This is this has not given any weight or this is ordinary least square method. Okay. So the same thing. Suppose if you look here. So this one is unweighted least square method, sorry, weighted least square method. So where we have given appropriate weight, the weight is this one. Wi is weight, which is nothing but one divided by sigma i square is weight. So we are giving this weights. Uh, by giving these weights, we are estimating beta one star and beta two star for the weighted least square methods. So this in simple terms, it can be written like this. To obtain the estimates, the weighted least square method minimizes the weighted residual sum of squares. So we have to minimize the residual sum of squares. This one is written, can be easily written like this, summation of wi. So wi is weight, which is nothing but one divided by sigma i square, ui cap square, which is equal to summation of wi, yi minus beta one cap minus beta two cap star xi square. So now in order to obtain the estimate, what we have to do, we have to differentiate with respect to, so that is what, so what happened to this? Okay. Hmm. Okay, so we have to differentiate this, uh, uh, equation with respect to uh, with respect to beta one, beta one cap, and beta two cap. 
So that is what we are differentiating here, partial differentiation with respect to WI. If we differentiate, we will get so this one. So this one, we are going to differentiate here. So differentiating with respect to beta one, differentiating with respect to the beta two, we'll get this one by applying chain rule. And setting the ones we get after differentiating with respect to your term. So we will get this equation uh, and this one normal equation. So these are the, so these are the uh, derivations which you will get in uh, uh, textbook, uh, simple derivations which I'm showing here. We will obtain the normal equations. So once we solve these normal equations, we'll get beta one cap formula. Our beta one cap formula is similar to the OLS method. So in OLS also beta two cap is equal to Y bar minus beta two cap X bar. But the only difference is beta two cap. That is the slope coefficient. The slope coefficient which we are going to estimate in GLS. Now it is having the that is equal to uh, earlier it used to used to be summation x i y i divided by summation x i square. Now in the GLS method we will be having a larger formula with weights w summation by sigma square. So this is the uh, the method of estimation GLS method of estimation when we face the problem of heteroscedasticity. So we can overcome the problem of heteroscedasticity by using GLS or interchangeably WLS method by uh, using this this one this for the formula. So what is the difference between ordinary least square method and the generalized least square method? So in ordinary least square method we are going to minimize this one. So this is unweighted. So there is no weights here. Summation u i cap square is equal to summation y i minus beta one cap beta two cap x i square. This is unweighted u square, where this OLS method gives equal weightage for the error terms. In generalized least square method, we are going to minimize the same thing, same u i cap square y i beta one beta two. But here we are going to apply weights. So this, in simple terms, we can write this as summation y i is equal to u i cap square. Summation y i minus beta one star x zero i plus beta two cap star x i whole square. So that means in GLS we minimize, we are going to minimize the weighted sum of residual square with weights. But in ordinary least square method, it's an unweighted um, residual sum of square. That means it gives equal weight for all the error terms or residuals. Okay. Suppose if you look here. Uh, in generalized least square method, the weight assigned to each uh, observation is inversely proportional. That is what I shown here, the inversely proportional. Suppose we have A, B, C error terms. So what does oh, ordinary least square method does is that ordinary least square methods give equal weightage for all these all the three error terms. But what generalized least square uh, method does is that it gives more weightage for A and B and less weightage for C because C is more dispersed. It is having larger variance. So this, the, the C error terms comes from a distribution where it is having larger variability. Hence, generalized D square, what it does is, it gives less weightage for C and more weightage for A error term and B error term. Because these two error terms comes from a distribution where they are, there is less variability, where there is less variance. So for that reason, this is called as weighted least square. On the other hand, what ordinary least square does is that it gives proportional equal weightage, A, B, C for all three error terms, it gives equal weightage. So when, it gives, when we give equal weightage, C will take more weightage in the ordinary least square than the A and B because C is largely dispersed. So that is the difference between the uh, GLS and the OLS. Hence, we can say that GLS is the appropriate method of estimation when we are facing the problem of heteroscedasticity. The equation minimize RSS are provoked. The WS GLS word is interchangeable. So that's what uh, I hope I have, uh, I have explained. So, uh, correctly. So, okay, so when we have this problem, so 
what are the methods we are going to have to detect atrocious catastrophe so we have two methods for the detection of atrocious catastrophe so the one uh, method of uh, uh, two methods the one is informal method informal method is uh, graphical plots uh, we can graph the uh, observations and the another one is uh, uh another uh, way of detecting atrocious catastrophe is formal econometric tests so we have around eight tests um, for detecting atrocious catastrophe but in most of the empirical analysis we go for fifth and sixth bruch pagan godfrey test and white's atrocious catastrophe test so these are the tests which generally used in empiricals to test for atrocious catastrophe the problem of atrocious catastrophe so park test in the formal econometric test we have park test glisher test arve godfrey lm test goldfend quadrant test bruch pagan godfrey test white's general atrocious catastrophe test and angels arc test and the eighth one is poincar basset test these are the test informal and the formal test so now we will look into the formal econometric tests uh, okay so what does it say is is suppose uh, what all these tests says uh, formal econometric tests what does all this uh, what does park test says what the glazier test says and how we can apply what is the null hypothesis uh, and all that is explained in this table so this is suppose assume that we have a model a multiple linear regression model yi is equal to beta x to y till beta k plus r alpha so we have a multiple linear regression model okay so now i want to test i want to detect whether there is atrocious catastrophe is there the presence of atrocious catastrophe or not then i can use any of this test park or bruch pagan white or quanker basset test any of this test we can use it so before using what we have to do is that we have to run a regression a regression that means this regression we have to run so yi beta 1 x1 i beta 2 x2 i beta 3 x3 i plus here i am like that suppose if you have a three explanatory variable you run a regression so once we run a regression we have to obtain this residuals obtain the residuals so once we obtain this residuals because uh, the the heart of the matter is atrocious catastrophe atrocious catastrophe is what it's is nothing but error term so now we error term is nothing but residuals when we look into a population parameter then it is a error term when we look into a sample then it is a residual so we have to obtain this residuals we have to first step we have to run a regression once we run a regression we have to obtain the residuals okay so i will tell you what have to what we have to do after obtaining residuals in each test so before that uh, we have we uh, i will explain this hypothesis so what is the hypothesis the null hypothesis in all this test is same so null hypothesis is delta 1 delta 2 till delta k is equal to 0 so <clears throat> See, you have there is a difference here, beta zero and delta zero. So beta zero is what we are going to estimate estimated in the regression, and u i is the residuals we have to obtain the residuals. Once we obtain the residuals, so that residuals again we have to run a regression on explanatory variables. Suppose if we have a two explanatory variable, means we have to obtain the residuals in the first step. in the second step now the residuals will become a dependent variable here we have a ui in the uh, the first uh, first row there is a model yi is equal to beta 1 beta 1 x1 i x2 i plus error term suppose assume that there are only uh, two explanatory variables so we run this model regression so once we run this regression we will get in any software we will get this residuals 
if you go and click generate residuals it will give all the residual error term, residual terms so we will obtain this residuals and this residuals now it will become a dependent variable and this residual is a dependent variable now we are going to regress on the explanatory variables of the first row first row the explanatory variables we have x1i x2i so those will remain as independent variables here now we regress them okay so for difference i have written this delta 0 delta 1 delta 2 okay so the null hypothesis is delta 0 delta 2 till delta k is 0 okay so that is the null hypothesis that means they are all constant there are the coefficients of all these are constant what is the alternative hypothesis? Alternative hypothesis H1 is at least one of the deltas. That means at least, at least one of the coefficients of the explanatory variable. Suppose if I take example in the first in the park test means dependent variable is log of residual square. Log of residual square is, a, is a depending on uh, delta zero, delta log of X1i. So that means here, the coefficient of x1 i x1 uh, then sorry the coefficient of delta 1 delta 0 delta 3 are they are simultaneously equal to 0 or uh, equal to 0 the alternative hypothesis is at least one of the delta is significantly different from 0 significantly 0 that means what it says is that at least one of the x affects the variance of the residuals. That means in this, in the model, at least one of the explanatory variable is affecting the error term. That is the alternative hypothesis. Another hypothesis is all the coefficients are zero. All the coefficients are zero means if uh, delta one is zero means zero multiplied by uh, x1 log of x1 is zero. Delta 2 multiplied by log of x2 is 0. That means none of the independent variable is in, influencing on the error term. Null hypothesis, what it says? No, at least 1 is unequal to 0. If 1 is unequal to 0, one of the deltas are unequal to 0 means at least one of the explanatory variables. Suppose this delta 1 is uh, unequal to 0 means at least then at least one of these explanatory variable is influencing on the error term. Because I'm telling that log of square of error terms is depending on this explanatory variable. So this is the null and alternative hypothesis. What is the decision criterion? If LM statistics, so uh, this I will explain when we go to Glacier test, reject null hypothesis if uh, p value is less than 0 0.05. So if I get as p value, which is less than 0.05%, we reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity and we'll uh, accept uh, basically we do not accept we we cannot reject the null hypothesis of uh, sorry alternative hypothesis alternative. and once we reject this null hypothesis we conclude that there is a significant evidence of heteroscedasticity okay if we do a test this one uh, I will show you how to do this test in EVUs also. If the p-value is less than 0.5% means, then we'll reject this null hypothesis. Our null hypothesis is almost uh, scedasticity. That means we are rejecting the uh, almost scedasticity assumption. And what it concludes is that there is an evidence. There is a proof of heteroscedasticity. Okay, what does, so this was the, uh, oh, uh, this was the uh, criteria uh, to reject. And so what does the park test test? It takes the uh, log of residual squares and it regression, regression log of all the explanatory variables. Okay. So if one of the coefficient is significant means, then we'll say that uh, that variable is influencing on the error terms of the residuals. Glissier test, what it takes? It do not squares, it do not take any um, log values. What it takes, it takes the absolute value of the residuals and it regress on the error terms, okay? And Arway Godfrey tests. What does Arway uh, Godfrey test does is that, again, it takes the log of residual squares 
again it regress on the independent variables okay so now if you compare this one and the first row first row is a, a dependent variable is y i but in auxiliary regression this is we call it as auxiliary regression this auxiliary regression or equation if you see all the uh, or the dependent variables are residuals in bruce pagan we are going to take residual squares which is equal to x1i x2i till x matrix zero but if you take if you look into white test so there is a bit difference here again we will take residual square x1i x2i the another explanatory variable is x1i square we have here x1i so this same variable is squared and taken as an explanatory variable and the fourth explanatory variable in white heteroscedasticity test is we have x2i the same x2i is squared here x1i square x2i square as a explanatory variable plus and the fifth uh, 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 explanatory variable is cross multiplication this means x2i x2i they are cross multiplied as and taken as one of the independent variable and they are going to test whether any of these explanatory variables is influencing on the error so this was the criteria and the coinker basset test is ui cap square delta 0 delta 1 and yi cap square that is the estimated yi value so for this entire y value we are going to get estimated y value plus any error okay so this was the uh, different tests available in the literature so first we will go to the park test so what does park test how we are going to detect in eu square in uh, uh, sigma i square in eu detection is first step is estimate the equation and obtain the residuals so suppose if we have a multiple regression means we have an equation yi beta 0 you you estimate this equation and you obtain this residuals okay in the second step estimate the following auxiliary regression the same you estimate the auxiliary regression log of ui cap square is a delta 0 log of x matrix variable log of x2 and log of x till x you estimate this and if and if any of the coefficient is significant in park test at least one of the is different from zero means significant means then you can reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity if we test this one and if this your delta square if it is significant p value 0.05 significant but the coefficient if it is significant means then we can reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity and we can conclude that there is heteroscedasticity that means this one first is influencing on the first variable x1 i is influencing on the error terms that means error variance is influenced by this first error term so if it is significant you straight away reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity and conclude that there is a presence of heteroscedasticity so we are going to do in eus for only three tests so park Uh, bruce pagan and white test so only for these te three tests we are going to demonstrate in the eus uh, because uh, these three are uh, these two are having some uh, drawbacks uh, and it's not generally used in empirics empiricals okay again the bruce pagan lm test uh, estimate the uh, equation and obtain the residue so we are going to estimate the equation the same equation in the first step you estimate obtain the residue obtaining residuals is very easy in any software i will show you again in the in the eus so just you have to click a, there is a icon called generate uh, residuals uh, residuals so once you click it it will generate residuals and when you running a regression you put that uh, in a dependent variable estimate the following auxiliary regression ui cap square xi x2 you run regression if at least one of the uh, delta square is different from zero means then we can say that uh, x affects the variance of the residuals uh, we reject the null and we say that uh, there is the presence of heteroscedasticity and we can 
take a decision uh, uh, this bruce pagan lm test um, what it does is that it compares n is lm uh, bruce pagan lm test or lag range multiplier test it is also uh, we can estimate by using um, Uh, this uh, chi square distribution not only that chi square distribution is chi square distribution what it says is uh, n is a number of observation r square so once we obtain um, uh, the uh, regression here so we will get an r square value so you, we have to multiply this n into r square so we will get a particular value so that is the uh, estimated value so if that is chi square if it estimated value is greater than the uh, stability value then we have to reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity okay, the chi square value critical uh, chi square value if it is estimated value is greater than the critical chi square value we reject the null hypothesis either we can compute lm or we can compute ef and uh, either we can do this manually or we can do this uh, straight away we can uh, click uh, if can test for bruce packen test or the software will give straight away it will use the values both way we can do it and white atherosclerosis test uh, in this test uh, this the one of the drawback of this white test is it consumes more degrees of freedom so when you have more explanatory variables so suppose uh, this is a model and we uh, first step estimate the equation in the second step uh, following estimate the following auxiliary regression in this auxiliary regression if you notice ui square square is same the uh, residual square x1 is explanatory variable x2 is the second explanatory variable and x3 is x1 square x1 square and the uh, delta 4 is x2 explanatory variable square and delta 5 is cross multiplication of x1 and x2 so we here we have added additional three explanatory variables so the drawback of white's atherosclerosis test is it consumes more degrees of freedom so for that reason people use generally use this bruce packen test in most of the literature but uh, this is also uh, important white test and uh, this again also follows chi square distribution we have to compute n square uh, number of observation r square and it is very similar if the obtained chi square value is greater than the critical chi square value you reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity if we reject then we will be facing the problem of atherosclerosis so these are the test uh, using this test we can detect atherosclerosity and then what are the remedial measures remedial measure is uh, we have to use either weighted least square when we know where we are going to use weighted least square we are going to use white's atherosclerosity corrected standard error second remedial measure and the third remedial measure is you redefine the variables redefine the variables means you convert them into log form so when you convert them into log log form the uh, the atherosclerosis may decline sometimes even it may vanish also so the most two remedial measures which are frequently used is the second one white's atherosclerosis corrected standard errors is the remedial measure which we are going to employ so again that one i am going to show it in e views and uh, the first one weighted least square uh, because that can also be used the problem is we don't know the sigma i square in in reality we don't know the weighted least square we don't know this sigma i square we don't know okay so for that reason uh, we cannot use weighted least square so but, but if we know we can use it and even if we use we have to be very careful in in interpreting the results so why we have to be careful means because the coefficients obtained by w uh, weighted least squares uh, the intercept will become a slope coefficient and the slope coefficient will become an intercept because 
we are going to divide it by weights so once we divide intercept will become slope beta 1 will become beta 2 beta 2 will become beta 1 that means slope coefficient will become beta 1 and the intercept beta 1 will become slope coefficient beta 2 so for that reason we have to be careful in writing interpretation when we use weighted least square method and but when we when you run that in a uh, software so that is taken care of by the regression uh, but theoretically you should know what is beta 1 and what is beta 2 when you are going to use a weighted least square in theoretical sense in general sense when we uh, uh, the uh, beta 1 is intercept beta 2 is slope coefficient but when we are going to use weighted least square that it will become reverse our beta 1 will become slope coefficient beta 2 becomes uh, uh, this intercept why because um, i can show that here suppose if we divide this uh, Okay, I have not included that here. Okay, if suppose if I say this uh, this one sigma i sigma i is equal to is a weight one divided by sigma i. So if I this sigma i this one suppose if you look into beta two beta two here this is sigma i is a weight sigma i is equal to uh, weights is equal to One divided by sigma i. Okay, so one divided by sigma i means so this x will get cancelled. So when x is get will get cancelled, you will be having only beta two here. So for that reason, beta two star will become only uh, this uh, intercept. Okay, weighted least square and whites atroscedastic corrected standard errors, and uh, this one. uh is one of the remedial measures which we are going to use when sigma i square is not known so white atroscedastic corrected variances or standard errors they are also called as robust standard errors suppose if you type if you are use stata software just you after regression if, if you put comma and you type robust means it will use white atroscedastic corrected robust standard errors that means that gives t values lesser t, uh, t value with a lower t values lower t values and uh, this atros catastasticity corrected standard errors will be greater than the ols standard errors the same regression model if you use one once you use ordinary least square method the another uh, in the second time if you use uh, atros uh, gls method and you, sorry you correct the standard errors by using that white set for specific corrected errors and then you compare the ols standard error with the uh, corrected standard error so when you compare these two standard errors uh, the atros catastasticity st corrected standard errors will be greater than the ols standard errors so when the standard errors are greater it will give t score lower t squares so it will t our t value will be less so if our t value will be less then the probability of rejecting the probability that a given coefficient is significantly different from zero is zero that means the probability of uh, that a given coefficient is a different from uh, zero will be it decreases that means it gives the best uh, that means the, uh, the other end a uh, white atroscedasticity is suitable when we have large samples so this one kada iga nam nyak bandu java avu yav gartu 2017 18 undi yar rojo redefining the variables last remedial measure is you can redefine the variables you can redefine the variables means either you can convert them into log form or you can estimate by using the Uh, root transformation, but this is less popular. We can use White's Atros Catastasticity Test as a uh, corrected standard error, as a uh, uh, what we say that um, to as a remedial measure for Atros Catastasticity. Okay, so so reference we can use uh, using a matrix, a practical guide by Stedmond. So this book and the other Gujarati, so the entire is covered. from these two books 
and we can demonstrate this in eviews uh, there is an example in, in the stedmon book uh, and uh, this gas 10 uh, eviews work file is uh, downloaded from this example file stedmon using econometrics a practical guide from this book it is downloaded and what it says is that it provides uh, uh, how the petroleum consumption it say it, it models petrol consumption depends on the tax rate and the number of vehicles registered so it's a cross sectional data and we can we will use that uh, data to test for uh, all these tests we will test these three tests using that uh, data we will uh, uh, we'll test for park bruce pagan white and wls g uh, wls and uh, informal method firstly we'll graph and then we'll start with uh, we will go for detecting the test okay so if time sir shall i continue yes, sir, sir. please continue sir huh? okay sir so i already i think i have all my screen is shared is it visible so i already downloaded i have a eviews work file which i have downloaded here Okay, I already downloaded here, uh, downloaded the file, which I, which I have shown in the link. So if you have a e-views, uh, this can be done in both Stata and e-views also. Chetan, uh, sir, Niranjan. Uh, sir. Uh, uh, sir, can you uh, just uh, show some examples how to compute and how to interpret the result? Uh, yeah, sir, I'm, uh, now I'm running it, uh, running that, sir. Now I'm going to uh, do the same, sir, Eva, uh, now. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Carry it, sir. Carry it, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, once we open, so now we have three variables here. So consumption, uh, P con is petroleum consumption, REG is uh, the number of vehicle registered, and tax is the government tax level. So it depends, petroleum consumption depends on number, the number of vehicles registered and tax. So what you do, you click on this control, uh, you click, you select this by holding control, then as a, open as a group. So once you open as a group, you will get the data of petroleum consumption. This is for so you, this is a, a data for United States. It is a cross-section data. It is having 50 states, 50 states, a particular year petroleum consumption, uh, vehicle registered and tax. Okay, so now, uh, okay, we'll delete this. So you, you can go for up quick and you go for estimate equation. You put, so once we go for estimate equation here, you, Type the dependent variable P con. Hello, sir. Sir, one second, sir. It's not visible. Okay. So is that visible, sir? Sorry, sir. Is that visible? No, sir. No, sir. Okay, uh, sir. So. So we have to go for quick. So you go for quick and there is option called estimate equation. So you click this estimate equation, then you type the dependent variable first. P, C, O, N is the dependent variable. C is the uh, constant or the inter uh, constant. Uh, then our explanatory variable, REG and tax. Sir, is that visible, sir, or still? Uh, Noted, sir. Noted. So, how to do this? I don't. 
Okay, yes, sir. sir. I will. Sir. So is that uh, is this visible, sir? Uh, no, sir. It's not visible, sir. It's not visible. One second, sir. Uh, regression. Uh, hello sir illa sir sir pa ide sir adu yena idu varak bandu avu avu enagidre avu iga sir sir हेलो वॉइस आवर था नंबर देते थे अब क्या अभी पता चला अनमिट चला जा रहा है इंटरनेट चला नहीं अनमिट पड़ा क्या नहीं निरंजन अनम्यूट योर ऑडियो प्लीज अनम्यूट योर ऑडियो निरंजन हाँ या सर हाँ सर ये कहीं तो कांटा है जी सर तो जस्ट कम आउट ऑफ़ द स्क्रीन हाँ सर आफ्टर कमिंग आउट ऑफ़ द स्क्रीन हाँ जस्ट टेक द ए For okay. more details, that uh, Chetan will direct you. Chetan. Ah yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell whatever you want to tell to Niranjan sir. Hmm? Ah yes, sir. Okay. Hmm? Ah sir, now just uh, minimize your uh, this uh, PDF file, sir. Okay. So I have mi minimized the entire. Uh, uh... Yes, sir. Uh, once you have minimized it. Ah. Uh. Then are you uh, seeing in the desktop the screen sharing option? Sir? Uh, screen sharing I... window will be there. There will be many programs which you have opened in your desktop. Okay, you want me to close that? Ah uh, no, sir. In that e views will also be there. And you have okay. to click uh. on e views. Okay. Uh. And then the screen share option will be there, sir. You have to click on screen share. Then it will be visible. I am a karma kandre. I am a yena udh putra. I am thara illi go. Correcta boramukala. I don't chur ori ori ya udh. Udhila nozli. Udhila. Oh, nozli na. Hmm. 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 इट Uh, our dependent variable is peak on private uh, petroleum consumption independent uh, then constant independent variable is registration and tax so if you have us software you can uh, try it so just we will run a regression okay so we will get a results like this <laughs> once we get the result you can name it As a equation one, that means I'm saving it as a equation one. So okay. Then uh, there is an option called here. P R O C proc is it visible? Hmm. Yes, sir. Here, so you if you go to this proc, then okay. So let me where is that equation? So this is equation. Okay, there is a proc here. You click this proc. So once you click this. there is an option called make residual series there is third uh, component make residual series okay so if you click this one make residual uh, are you getting yes sir okay so if you 
go for proc in the estimation window make residual series that means we are generating the residuals okay Re residual series okay residual 01 you click okay so once if we click okay we are all these are the residuals or the error terms residuals which we have which we have we have to graph it down okay so then okay so it is saved here resid01 is our residual so suppose okay so now uh, we want to graph it whether how the residuals are behaving so just to make as we are going to simple uh, go for a view here uh, okay so instead of that you select uh, regression and residuals then open as a group so once you open as a group you go for view here then graph so if you graph select scatter so then in axis left side i want uh, residuals bottom is range and residuals okay so this this the of uh, form uh, informal way of detecting atrocity that is graphical method so in the o x axis we have residuals which we have generated and in the uh, o x axis we have uh, number of registered vehicles that means as registration vehicles increases from zero to like this outlays the uh, the variance of the variance in the, uh, the error variance also increases the, this is one graph the another one is you can residual then tax so we have two explanatory variable the one is uh, register uh, number of registered vehicles and the tax so you open as a group then you then go for a graph so in the graph select a scatter go for axis when you go for axis the left should be always uh uh the tag should go for bottom and left should be residuals in the ox axis residuals o ox uh, oy axis it is residuals ox axis our explanatory variables so this also that means the tax increases from 4 to 6 8 to 68 8 to 10 10 to 12 the variance it shows the how the residuals are spread okay so this is one of one way of uh, informal method that is by graphical method you can check how the errors are uh, errors are distributed so then we can go for formal methods formal methods are uh, the park test and uh, bruce pagan test and the white atrocity test okay, so we will delete this so now we will i will show how to do the park test so uh, we will run a regression quick go for quick estimate equation uh dependent variable is p con c rig and tax so this was the model so we will run a regression model we obtain the results so once we obtain the uh, results so we we'll name it as i am redoing it name it as equation 2 click okay so once you uh, done it then again go for uh, we have saved the equation okay now uh, we close this go for quick then estimate equation so what is what we are what is the park test park test is our dependent variable will be now residuals so residuals is i have, uh, where is that residual so this is residual okay so log residual
residual square log of residual square okay so this is our dependent variable now earlier our dependent variable is petroleum consumption now in park test our dependent variables are our residuals which we have generated okay. then constant we are regressing on explanatory variables such as reg and tax okay so now we'll click okay we'll get a result we'll get a results so now the coefficient the coefficient of this one reg reg coefficient what the probability p value is less than 5% less than 5% 0.005% so this is significant that means this is influencing on the error that means we will reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity homoscedasticity assumption is what delta 0 is equal to delta 1 is equal to delta 2 is equal to 0 all coefficients are simultaneously equal to 0 alternative hypothesis is at least one is unequal to 0 that means here our regression is significant coefficient and it is uh, influencing on atherosclerosis so this is park test so this is detecting atherosclerosis which variable which explanatory variable is influencing on error okay so this is influencing on regression and this is at 10% tax is influencing on atherosclerosis by 10% and this one reg uh, registration of vehicles is influencing on petroleum consumption by 5% so it is significant we reject the null of homoscedasticity and assume that there is atherosclerosticity in the model it in which say we can conclude that there is atherosclerosis in the model this is park test and we can we'll do for white test so we'll delete this equation go for again quick estimate equation once you uh, estimate equation dependent variable c reg and tax tax so this is the model so this one uh white test okay click okay so we will get a regression output okay so how we will we are going to do this is go for view once you go for view there is a residual diagnostic test residual diagnostic test so once you go for residual diagnostic test there is atherosclerosis test you click this atherosclerosis test and you click it on white atherosclerosis test so click okay so if you click you will get a value p value so this one this p value so what is our null hypothesis null hypothesis is homoscedasticity that is delta 1 is equal to delta 2 they are simultaneously or equal to 0 so here what our p value is 0.00 so that means we can reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity and accept alternative hypothesis of atherosclerosis that means by using white test we can detect there is a presence of atherosclerosis in the model so what you have to do go for quick again i am uh, i am again i am showing it estimate equation p con constant rig and tax dependent variable followed by the independent variable and a constant you click okay you will get a regression output don't worry of the regression output go for view go for residual diagnosis once you go for view then you go for residual diagnosis in residual diagnosis click atherosclerosis test in atherosclerosis test click white and okay so you will get so it 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 shows f statistics probability of f and the probability of chi square actually you have to take this this is a chi square distribution you have to take probability of chi square value the second one this you have to take so it is 0.00 that means it is significant if it is significant you reject the null hypothesis of almost 
and elasticity and assume and and uh, the it implies there is atrophic elasticity okay then look here here is it visible c uh, reg square reg multiplied by tax reg tax square and tax dependent variable residual square independent variable regression square sorry reg registration of vehicle square registration multiplied by tax reg tax square and tax okay if we do this uh, um, regression and we can we will get the same value we have not done the regression here so what we have done regression and we have estimated directly we have estimated y test suppose if i go quick estimate equation here if i dependent variable is same thing here it is i hope it is is it visible yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. suppose if i type type r e s i d to the power of 2 is our depend same thing like in the left hand side here here these are the this one dependent variable here r e s i d square to the square is dependent variable okay is equal to c constant r e g to the power of 2 square this one here r e g square this one if the cursor is there i think it is visible it seems reg square then reg multiplied by tax okay then another independent variable is reg then tax to the power of 2 then tax so if you check the white atrophicity test sorry what is the uh, yeah white atrophicity test in the auxiliary regression this is what we have used it auxiliary regression x1 x2 then x1 square x2 square then x1 multiplied by x2 same here regression square regression uh, sorry registration multiplied by tax then registration tax square tax okay where is tax square okay this is tax square tax okay so suppose if i run regression now okay let me so f statistics is 17.043 f statistics and okay so now if i run regression derivative equation okay so now we got the same in Take uh, now. So suppose now you multiply our R square value is zero point six six four five one three. Okay. So where is calculator? okay our uh, r square value is 0.664513 multiplied by number of observations our number of observations are 50 it seems okay 50 so this is equal to uh, estimated value is 33.2256 okay 33.256 so 33.26 the chi square value is earlier we got chi square value uh a uh, chi square value is some 11.0705 right so that means our estimated value is greater than the critical t value so we can reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity in both ways you can do it uh by doing regression manually and the uh, straight away uh, selecting uh, white atrophicity test testing the equation both you both you will get a same result then lastly we will uh, try bruce pagan test quick estimate the equation 
same click on c rig and tax at this time 130 no 140 so dependent variable constant and the independent variables and uh, you click okay so we will get the results then go for view once you go for view residual diagnostic test click atroscadastic test once you atroscadastic test it shows i have selected bruce pagan test so bruce pagan it shows here the dependent variable is residual square which i have shown in the auxiliary regression and the independent regressors independent variable is c reg tax so if you click okay so we will get the values here number of r square 14 point is the r square value chi square value is 0.009 that means it is significant at 1% if it is significant at 1% means we reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity that means if we reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity means it implies that there is atroscedasticity in the model now we have to correct it so how we are going to correct it we are going to correct by using two methods the one is weighted least square method the another one is uh, white's atroscedasticity corrected errors standard errors so i will delete this equation so now it is clear that in our data there is atroscedasticity so go for a quick estimate equation petroleum consumption constant reg uh, registration of vehicles and tax okay so this is correcting atroscedasticity when we know that variance is known weighted least square method go for options in option okay this we have done there is a option icon here i hope it is visible click options click here instead of ordinary you click uber and white okay uber and white and there is white weights here weights here so you click this one it and click inverse of standard deviation then put weights here what is weight here 1 divided by reg our weight is 1 divided by sigma square and we assume that sigma square is known means we are taking reg as a is a weights then you run okay so this gives the model estimation output it says weight is in a dependent variable is petroleum consumption method is least square method it shows least square method why it's the upper part is weighted least square lower part is unweighted least square means that is ordinary least square method statistics r square ordinary least square method likewise here we will be having weighted least square statistics here uh weighting 1 divided by reg is the weightage weightage type is inverse of standard deviation and this is atros statistic considered standard errors okay so i have done a bit little bit mistake here so go for quick estimate equation click on c rig and tax go for options instead of for the you don't so here inverse of standard deviation uber white 1 divided by reg regression okay you select we will get this one now <coughs> so we got a result petroleum consumption registration of vehicle significant tax is significant and the coefficient value constant is 218 tax is negatively influencing and this is weighted least square this is the weighted statistics of gls so unweighted statistics this is the statistics of ordinary least square method so now in this corrected model now i want to check whether there is atroscedasticity or not i have employed weighted least square method using weighted least square method i have tested now now i have to check test whether there is atroscedasticity uh, is there or not bruce pagan test 
C. Now the chi square value is 0 0.7493. That means it is not significant. If it is not significant, means what it, it implies? We cannot uh, reject the null hypothesis of homos cadasticity. That means null hypothesis homos cadasticity we cannot reject. If we cannot reject, means our data now is homos 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 cadastic. That means it is having constant variance now. Once we use weighted least square, when the sigma square is known, now our heteroscedastic model now become a homoscedastic model. So this is one way. And lastly, the last method is White's heteroscedastic criteria. So we can use that one also. Go for a quick estimate equation. Pick one, C, rig, and tax. Go for options here. Uh, then instead of ordinary here, select Uber white, okay? And don't go for weights here. So weights is only for weighted lead square. And you select only, uh, this is now we are doing weights, heterostatistic, corrected standard errors and variance. You click okay. So now we have the coefficients of this one. R square value is 86. Dependent, independent very significant. That registration is significantly explaining petroleum consumption. Tax, again, it is negative. It is significant at 5%. Now, we will, this is, if you check here, Uber white heteroscedasticity consistent standard errors and covariance. Mm -hmm. This is a remedial measure. So now, if we check heteroscedasticity test, Bruce Pagan, so it's so significant here. Uh, okay, so right, prof Uber right. Okay, so it shows if you look here, this standard error. Uh, okay, I will save this. Uh, once we use this uh, white heteroscedastic stand, uh, standard error method, we will get lower T values. T value is now 2.326, 8.64 minus 2. Our T value is T value reduces. So once if we T value reduces means we'll be having a estimates which are having a lesser variance. Okay, by these two methods, we can detect the problem of heteroscedasticity. So by using PARC test, Bruce Pagan test, and uh, <clears throat> white heteroscedasticity test, uh, the remedial measure is either you can use weighted least square or you can use whites. You can just the same uh, least square method, but you are correcting only the standard errors. You can correct only the standard errors. So that is whites heteroscedasticity corrected standard errors. So this is all about heteroscedasticity. I hope I have justified my role. I should thank profusely Professor Rangappa sir and Uchagoda sir for giving me an, an opportunity to share uh, what I learned uh, on regression diagnostics. Thank you, sir. If any participants have any uh, questions or any issues, you can uh, you can ask me. Sir, could you please repeat the first test in the EVU, sir? First test in the sense, sir, which one, sir? First test in the EVU, sir. In the EVU is the first test you did. We could not see it properly, sir. Park test. Ah, yes, sir. Park uh, could test. you please so again? Park uh, test again, please. It's very simple, sir. You, you will go for quick here. Yes, Estimate sir. equation. Our, okay. Uh, the auxiliary regression, the dependent variable in park test is residuals square. That means we are run a regression, obtain the residuals. We have already obtained the residuals here, sir. Okay, I will do again. Take on C, rig, and tax. So our dependent variable is petroleum consumption, independent variable is uh, registration of vehicles, and T is a tax. Okay, so we will run regression. So 
we will get an output we don't we should not worry of output now because we are concerned only of atros catastasticity to detecting and correcting so we we'll, there is an icon here proc is it visible sir i ah, yes sir yes sir is visible sir so once we click here there is a third component make residual series okay so if ah, yes, we sir. click this uh, residual series it ask you can name it as okay i will just name you for my convenience i will just name it as e3 okay so this is our residuals of the model so what we are doing in now all this uh, atherosclerosis detection test is just these residuals we are regressing on our independent variables to know which independent variable is affecting the residuals or the by affecting the variance of the residuals okay so i will close this okay now again we will go for quick estimate equation our please remember sir our uh, uh, dependent variable now is residual square so i named it as e3 so e3 so log of e3 square so is the dependent variable in part test whatever the residuals we have generated that is log of square square of log so that is the auxiliary regression mentioned by park so it is to log of e okay so now c log of reg then log of tax okay uh so we'll run regression okay what i did is is did here is that i have run both both explanatory variables here A dependent variable is here it shows dependent variable log of residual square independent variable is log of reg uh, registration of vehicles and uh, another independent variable is log of tax session so we can see here both are significant if this both are significant means our null is equal to delta 3 is equal to 0 or simultaneously equal to 0 that means these two are not simultaneously equal to 0 that means they are uh, they are significant we will reject the null hypothesis of homo scedasticity and it implies there is atros scedasticity in the model if it is significant means we can clearly say there is atros scedasticity in the model so this is park test sir i hope i have uh, cleared your uh, doubt ah, yes sir yes sir yes sir thank you sir thank you sir if any participants have any questions you can pose it to sir you can unmute yourself and speak the only condition is uh, don't speak when someone else is speaking if anyone has any question you can ask ask sir just unmute yourself and speak anjali ja has raised hand anjali ja you can uh, madam anjali ja you can actually unmute yourself and ask a question hello hi yeah, yeah, audible, audible. good afternoon sir yeah sir my question is which test is good for a small sample okay. and in all tests which one is more appropriate so the better one is uh, when we when we have a large sample test we are going to use white atros scedasticity test white sorry white uh, uh, standard error corrected test okay for a smaller sample size means we can use wls method and you can oh. use any oh. any method to detect atherosclerosis uh, we have around uh, three park test uh, park test bruce pagan and white atherosclerosis test you can use bruce pagan godfrey test to detect atherosclerosis 
for remedial measure you can go for weighted least square okay thank you sir okay sir thank you sir we will end the session here we will have one more session on uh, 11th okay sir sir yeah. let me stop sharing the screen sir okay sir okay sir okay sir i'll stop i request asking out of tag Anish is there here. Okay, sir. Anya, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, you know, uh, for your uh, uh, wonderful uh, presentation. Anish, so, what are you doing? How to? Ha 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 ha! I tell you. What happened, Bina? Uh, sir, uh, Chetan, please uh, unmute uh, Halish. Everyone can unmute themselves. Just okay. ask the person to unmute. Okay, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Alex Shambhutesh, research scholar of Damanagiri University, Damanagiri. It's my immense pleasure to thank the resource person of today's workshop, Dr. Niranjan sir, who is assistant professor of Department of Economics, Vijayanagara Sri Krishna Devaraya University, Ballari. Today, sir, has delivered his excellent presentation on the topic of heteroscodasticity and homoscodasticity, along with other concepts nowadays, which are more useful to the research scholars and participants. Thank you so much for your insightful information. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you very much. I should thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to share my views. so thank you very much and uh, thank you for everybody for your time for and your presence thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you i request all the participants please rejoin around the 230 like that because we have one more session so uh, afternoon 232 3 o'clock professor mahesh sir is going to be deliver lecture on auto correlation thank you thank you very much thank you sir chetan ah yes sir in the session i ah, yeah, fine sir And again, I have to restart at two thirty PM, sir. Ah, uh, two two fifteen or two twenty. Two fifteen. Okay, sir. I shall restart at two fifteen, sir. Two thirty like that. Ah, yeah, fine, sir.